Okay. To add a little bit of colors in this scene, we need some textures. You can download the ones that I have here on my repo. And again, I'll publish the link down below uh, in the description of the video. Or you can choose whichever texture you prefer. I'm going to use different textures to determine different parts of the scene. Uh, we'll have, for example, the hexagons that are made of grass, the hexagons that are made of sand, stone, water, dirt, etc. Once we have our textures, we can download them. Next, we are going to add some new constants. These, con these constants uh, basically will be used to decide which texture to use for that particular hexagon, depending on the height that the that the hexagon has when we are making it with the make x function. Remember when we said that we wanted to group as many geometries as possible in a single geometry and then have a single mesh instead of having multiple meshes for each hexagon. With the same logic now instead of having a single hexagon geometry containing all the hexagons we're going to have separate geometries for each type of hexagon. For example, this geometry is only going to contain the hexagons that are made of sand, or rather all the hexagons that will take the sand textures. Now we have to change the make x function because we don't have a single geometry. There's multiple geometries for each type of hexagon. So let's go ahead and delete this line. And let's start by defining the logic for stone hexagons. The logic is pretty simple. If the height is bigger than stone height, then this geometry is going to be bundled in the stone geo variable because the, this is representing all the stone hexagons. Now we're going to do the same for all the other geometries. There we go. Same identical logic, uh, just repeated for the other geometries. Now we need to create a new function which we are going to use to create a mesh given a geometry and a texture. For now, we are also going to increase the environment map intensity to one. Okay, this new setup, let's now go back here. Let's remove the mesh that we, have, that we had previously and replace it with the new meshes. Now, as a quick recap, MakeX is going to populate these geometries. Then we are going to use these geometries with the X max with the X mesh function and a texture to create a mesh that we're going to add to the scene. This way we're going to have a single mesh that contains all the hexagons that are made of stone, a single mesh for all the hexagons that are made of dirt, etc. And again, we're doing this for performance reasons. If we had a single mesh for every hexagon, that would, necessi that would necessitate many draw calls per frame, which is something that we want to avoid. And now we have our textures, even if they don't look as pretty as we would have liked. The next step, in fact, will be to adjust a little bit the lighting of the scene. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll start by enabling shadows in the renderer. As always, don't forget to import these constants. Then we need to add a new light. We're going to use a point light for this example, but a directional light will work uh, almost in the same way. Now, this is an interesting function call. So here we are defining the color of the light. But to make sure that this is going to be interpreted by the renderer by a proper physical color, then we have to use this line such that we can use this color to something that 3JS can internally use for its calculations. Now we have to make sure that this light can cast shadows. The map size uh, vector determines the resolution of the, of the shadow map. So increasing this number should theoretically give us better resolution, but 512 should be plenty for this project, so we'll leave it at that. Now we have to make sure that our meshes can cast shadows. And we can do that by adding these two lines. Let's now go back to our original environment map intensity. And boom, take a look. Now this looks pretty impressive. Shadows and point lights can seriously improve the, the perceived realism of the scene. 
especially for this kind of scene where there are, there's plenty of shadow casters. As a last final touch with this video, let's do something that doesn't make any sense, but that it makes the color of the light a little bit uh, a little bit stronger than the one that is computed here. And we'll do that by just repeating the call to convert sRGB to linear. Again, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but it's going to make our color more vibrant. So that's why we're going to do that. And there we go. This is the result. I think I'm pretty happy with what I have so far. So I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, we'll try to add the missing pieces. Uh, the sea, the container of the scene, the trees, the clods. And then we'll finish this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, see you in the next part.